Webpack is, I would say for a very long period, it was the de facto standard bundler for the web. Almost everyone was using it. All the major frameworks were built on top of it. And I think the reason for its popularity is because it is so flexible. It is extremely powerful. You can pretty much customize every part of it. It is designed to be as flexible as possible. And I think it was also a necessary design because in the early days of web development, there are so many differing opinions on how we should do things. People just disagreed on almost everything. So Webpack, as a tool, it wanted to support all these different use cases and opinions. So it made itself extremely flexible. And people started writing plugins and loaders on top of Webpack to essentially customize it uh, to fit their use cases or preferences. Almost every framework had their own version of CLI. So Vue had Vue CLI, React had Create to React app, and there are meta frameworks built on top of Webpack as well. All of them do very deep customization through plugins or config complex configurations. So that is the main strength of Webpack is that you can pretty much configure or customize it to do anything you want. The downside of it is also the configuration is so complex and uh, the API is, is also so, I would say um, it, it's powerful, but it, there are so many things you need to know and understand to be able to write a Webpack plugin, which makes it very intimidating for the average developer. Like I've seen Webpack projects with like a conf configuration file that's a thousand lines long. That's how complex it can get. I think in the early days, people were fine with it because most people using Webpack are framework authors like me, where we would research how to configure it and we would uh, essentially wrap Webpack to provide a more streamlined experience to the end users. But as its popularity grew, more and more people had to actually deal with the internals of Webpack because um, when they're using these wrapped up versions of Webpack, um, they would run into limitations and now they would want to customize it by themselves. And when they dig into the internals of Webpack and how it actually works, they realize it's much more complex than they thought. But people had to learn it. So um, a lot of teams that I know in the past had like roles, like we joke about it because like there are roles called like configuration engineers whose sole job is to create, uh, set up the Webpack configuration for each project and maintain it over the course of the project. So I think it's a double-edged sword, right? Uh, the flexibility of Webpack really uh, gave people the flexibility they needed to try different things, right? But over time, it, it is definitely like over time, people started to converge on a lot of ideas. Like how do we handle CSS? How do we handle HTML? Uh, how do we transpile components or future syntax of JavaScript? A lot of these things were done via plugins or loaders or configurations. Oftentimes people would use very bloated configurations, add a ton of loaders. Some huge Webpack projects can take up to a few minutes just to spin up the dev server. But Webpack was, I would say Webpack was never written with build performance as a priority. It was mostly trying to cater to as many different use cases as possible. Mm -hmm. So, as users start throwing more and more demanding workload at it, people start to run into build performance and scaling issues. And I think if it's just the build performance, uh, it probably wouldn't be that bad because let's say you need 10 minutes to build your project to production. It still, it still sounds acceptable. I think the biggest issue is during development, the hot module replacement performance deteriorates as your project gets bigger. Uh, I think that's the main thing that a lot of people started to get frustrated about. Um, imagine when you start a new project, you save the file and it updates, the, the component hot updates in under a second, right? That's a very smooth development experience. So a month later, it gets down to two seconds. Another month goes by, it goes to three seconds. And it's, um, I think for a lot of people, they're almost used to hitting save and just wait for like five, six, or 10 seconds for Webpack to do its thing and then to, to see the update. Um, so I think that is probably 
what I was also most frustrated with in my own projects, because the Vue, official Vue CLI was built on top of Webpack. And when I was debugging some user projects, I noticed that it was slow to scaffold a project. It was slow to start the project. It was also slow to hot update. I was really thinking, why should Vue developers accept this level of developer experience? Is there a way to fundamentally make it a more pleasant experience when you're working on Vue projects? Um, and to be honest, my whole motivation of looking into build tools is all about improving the developer experience of Vue users.